Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about the historical SpaceX launch that happened a few days ago and is currently actually still somewhere up there above us at a uh, distance of about 400-ish kilometers from the surface of the planet. I wanted to actually show you some of the cool tidbits from the launch and explain some of the things that happened when the capsule actually docked with the International Space Station and most importantly focus on why this mission is actually pretty damn amazing. Anyway, let's start with the actual launch itself that you can still watch on the SpaceX YouTube channel um, that shows you all of the little tidbits and um, what you may have not known about this launch is that, well apparently NASA actually constructed a completely new bridge right here meant specifically for the astronauts that will be using this platform later on when SpaceX becomes NASA's first private launch platform for um, delivering astronauts to the International Space Station and to also other locations around the solar system eventually, of course. The inside of the Dragon capsule that's going to be delivering these astronauts is by far one of the most realistic, sophisticated, and I would say even luxurious uh, capsules ever. Now this, at least in terms of the size that you get, is several times larger than the Soyuz capsule that has been delivering astronauts for the past uh, few decades. As a matter of fact, uh, anyone who's used Soyuz is going to be absolutely relieved to use this instead. There's a lot of space here, it also looks really awesome, and all in all, uh, this probably is a much better experience than using Soyuz where you basically cramped for the entire trip. On top of this, this was also the 35th successful uh, recovery of a Falcon 9 rocket um, that basically makes this an absolute success for SpaceX in every single possible way. They have so far recovered 35 of 69 Falcon 9 rockets launched and in the last few launches they basically recovered every single one of them and some of them even got to refly up to four times already. So this basically guarantees that SpaceX is going to be the leader in space industry and specifically launching uh, live astronauts uh, for the next few decades until someone else invents a better, more efficient rocket. Now this right here is actually the uh, live view uh, well, it was a live view when I actually, when I was watching it, directly from the Canadian Space Agency that was uh, broadcasting this, and it was actually showing the docking procedures, and at the same time showing Ripley right here, of course named after the famous um, Aliens Ripley, who's actually not just a mannequin, it's um, a very sophisticated telemetry apparatus meant to measure all kinds of effects on the human body that uh, this mannequin is going to experience um, from the launch up to the landing that's going to happen later this week when I'm making this video. So basically for about a week they're going to collect all of this data and use it later on for studies on actual astronaut launches that are going to start happening sometime later this year. And this right here is a little earthy that's um, actually meant to measure zero gravity. It's not just a toy, it's a zero gravity uh, meter in a sense. But prior to docking with the ISS, um, Dragon actually spent approximately 24 hours orbiting our planet and actually playing catch up with ISS because of the way that orbital dynamics work. And the idea here was to not just kind of spend this time catching up with ISS, but also to test various systems, including emergency procedures. So this was actually a very sort of stressful time for the crew on, on the ground because if anything failed here, the whole mission would fail. And once those initial stages were finished, it then proceeded to the so-called Waypoint 1, which is about 150 meters away from the station. It then reversed a little bit, it actually moved back a little bit to practice moving away in case of an emergency situation. And then it moved back um, to uh, Waypoint 2, which is about 20 meters away, at which point the docking became automatic and the onboard computer basically did the rest. And you can actually watch all of this in a replay from several videos, but I think the main one is from the Canadian Space Agency that actually shows the three astronauts on board, uh, the Canadian, the Russian, and the American, entering the capsule and essentially uh, measuring the air quality in there and making sure that everything is fine. So one of the questions that someone actually asked me is, if you look at the video of astronauts inside a capsule, there's something on their head. And also, if you actually look carefully, prior to entering the capsule, they also have some kind of a mask on. And so people were wondering what's going on here? What are they actually wearing? Why are they wearing it? Well, it's actually a very common procedure when a, a capsule docks with the ISS to wear at least some kind of a filter mask in case all of the dust that is inside the capsule um, got lifted up and starts floating around. 
Uh, but for this specific case, and this is actually another um, procedure that um, needs to be followed, um, when a capsule uses uh, some kind of a gas that's unsafe for whatever reasons, and in this case, um, SpaceX actually uses what's known as Freon for its uh, cooling of the capsule, um, there's always a chance for this gas to leak inside the capsule. And so because of this, uh, the astronauts had to wear the oxygen masks um, even inside the ISS when they opened the capsule. And as you'll see here in a second, they actually measured the quality of the air to make sure that no Freon leaked. And as soon as this was confirmed, they were able to take off the masks. And after this, they actually followed it up with a pretty cool welcoming speech that I'm going to play right here in this video. So just watch this and let me know in the comments what you think. Good morning. International Space Station is speaking. I am Oleg Kalanenko, ISS Expedition 58, commander from Russia, David Sanjak, flight engineer from Canada, and McLean, flight engineer from USA. On behalf of my crew, I would like to congratulate the United States of America and the NASA team with this significant event, successful launch and dock of SpaceX crew Dragon spaceship. It's honor and uh, pride for us to meet with uh, this spaceship here on board the International Space Station and uh, to become a part of uh, important mission for the U.S. space program and the historical step uh, on our way. And historical step all the way of a human, a human being uh, beyond maybe the whole Earth's orbit to the Moon and Mars in the future. Hello, bonjour. Of course, uh, honored and privileged to be here on this important day. We're standing in uh, Node 2, the very forward end of Space Station, where the space shuttles used to dock. And now we have a brand new vehicle that's come this morning, flawless operations, the result of years of work, thousands of people around the world among many teams. And uh, it was a beautiful thing to see. Of course, Space is all about teamwork, collaboration. Today we welcome a the brand new spacecraft to Space Station, a great new uh, uh, addition to the quiver of tools we have, humans, to further space exploration. This is a, a good day, first day of a, a new era uh, for the next generation of space explorers. Our sincere congratulations to all Earthlings who have enabled the opening of this next chapter in space exploration. To the International Space Station teams, past and present, who stand guard 24 hours a day at control centers from Moscow to Japan, Germany to Houston. Congratulations to the teams at SpaceX and Boeing, who have been working diligently to define what this new era of commercial spaceflight will look like. And congratulations to all nations, private space firms, and individuals who wake up every day driven by the magic of exploration. This day begins to all, belongs to all of us. Spaceflight gives us a chance to reflect on the context of our existence. We're reminded that we are human before any of our differences, before all of the lines that are drawn that divide us. And we are reminded that we're at our best when we are part of something bigger than ourselves. In 1957, just over 60 years ago, history changed when Russia launched Sputnik, the world's first artificial satellite. People across the globe gathered in backyards and looked up at the night sky hoping to catch a glimpse. A few years later, people of all nationalities gripped hands, hoping and praying for Yuri Gagarin's successful launch as he became the first human in space. And in 1969, every TV across the globe was tuned in as Buzz, Michael, and Neil embarked on the first human journey to the moon. Today, human advancement of exploration continues as the first new space vehicle designed for humans in over 40 years arrived at our front door, welcomed by our crew of one Russian, one Canadian, and one American who had been living together as family for three months aboard the International Space Station. These events remind us that we are more alike than different. 
that we can be united by a cause that is not based on fear, threat, or common enemy, but rather on a bold endeavor, an insatiable curiosity to go beyond what is known and to do what has never been done. We humans were built for exploration, and we were built to do it together. And I think we should show off the newest space vehicle. And honestly, this speech itself was actually very inspiring. Um, this, of course, means a lot of different, different things for different people. Like, for example, for America, it's essentially their way of finally finding a way to launch astronauts using their own private endeavor, ending NASA's dependency on the Russian space agency, to which Russia, of course, replied with... But in all seriousness though, uh, this mission is definitely going to change the world of space exploration and also space missions for the better. Uh, SpaceX is actually already uh, aiming for a lot of bigger things, uh, but one of the things that they might also be able to do in the near future is start um, helping out with the development of the private space uh, station known as Bigelow Commercial Space Station that's actually been in development for the past few years um, and they've only about a year ago started to actively develop in this and they already kind of have a lot of things planned but SpaceX actually will be using a very similar docking uh, port or actually almost exactly the same docking port as this station and what's interesting is that this is the docking port that I'm talking about and it's actually the first time it was ever used this was um, developed specifically for the private missions and it was attached to the ISS back in 2016 by another mission from SpaceX. And this port is actually developed specifically for use um, by private sector and uh, will be used in many different stations in the future. It's also the port that's going to be used by the upcoming uh, Boeing mission uh, that's most likely going to launch sometime in the next few years uh, on their Starliner rocket. And so essentially this right here is the face of the international space exploration. This docking port is probably going to change a lot in the future. And as you can see, this docking right here uh, that occurred only a few hours ago from when I'm making this video is basically the beginning of a new era of space exploration, specifically the private space exploration. Uh, now, um, all in all, everything that happened during this docking procedure and everything during this mission was absolutely incredible and beat all of the parameters and um, performed much better than expected. Uh, nothing went wrong, everything worked according to plan. And the only thing that needs to be done now is return the capsule back to Earth that's going to be happening sometime around Friday this week or most likely already happened if you're watching this in the future. Well, your future, not mine. Anyway, so that's the docking completed. Uh, what's interesting about this uh, particular docking that was uh, broadcasted is that it was broadcasted from a Windows system, which was really unusual and very interesting. But anyway, so um, a mission itself was absolutely mind-blowing. I'm sure SpaceX is going to benefit greatly from this. But most importantly, a lot of us uh, will probably benefit from this as well, because this is the beginning of a new era for human space exploration. Uh, the live astronaut mission is planned for later this year, probably around fall to maybe uh, winter, um, but they still need to test the actual escape mechanism before the mission can begin. Anyway, on that note, that's all I wanted to mention in this video, and if you want to check out the video that I was showing you, it's in the description below. It's directly from the Canadian Space Agency, and I hope they don't mind me using it here. Anyway, thank you for watching, hopefully you learned a little bit more about this mission, why it's so exciting from this video, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye. And also, maybe consider subscribing to this channel, and maybe even the Canadian Space Agency channel, and maybe also NASA channel, because, I mean, those are channels that you should be watching anyway, and also SpaceX has a lot of cool videos. Oh, and maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon as well, because it does help me quite a lot. Anyway, enough of me talking, I'll see you tomorrow, space out.